As per our conversation last week, in your court there, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> See if they'd be able to sponsor us or not. Just throw a little something out there for you. Uh, with that, lights out. Welcome aboard another edition of F1 Starting Grid. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter and on Facebook at Former Racing and email us theformerracing at gmail.com. Welcome in Chaz Day. I'm Brock Young. We have a very busy news day, even though there's no racing involved. We got news galore, including a very sad report here. I'm just getting this report in. Um, the CEO of Spa apparently was involved in a murder-suicide with one other woman and um, her husband. First off, our condolences to both families and friends of um, these people. But um, apparently they were found a few days ago, uh, late in the evening, where uh, the bodies of two men, two women and young one man was discovered by the police in a house of Ruby with all three presenting gunshot wounds. And this is in, uh, from the Luxembourg police out of Belgium. So Chaz, uh, sad news in the world of Formula One right there. And once again, our condolences go out. Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously it's, uh, it's distressing news when you hear about any human who, uh, loses their life, especially to some sort of domestic violence situation. Um, obviously we know about this one because we're connection to formula one, but on a human level, it's, uh, it's, it's sad to hear. So, um, condolences definitely go out to, to her family for sure. And prayers at, at that as well. In fact, Belgium has not happened yet on the calendar or on common probably next few weeks into, uh, into Belgium here. And we'll see how formula one, formula one reacts to that too. So, uh, on to the next topic, and this is actually another sad news here that I love this course. Uh, and you know me in courses here, Chaz, but um, I love this course. I was hoping it would be playing this year, but it won't be. But the Japanese Grand Prix is canceled mm. part of October. So COVID has struck again. And uh, apparently, Bo, in place of both Jap uh, the Japanese Grand Prix and the Australian Grand Prix, Turkey will have a double header back to back. Yeah, I mean we're we're all kind of kind of shook up uh, <laughs> with uh, in these last couple of years have been have been you know just very interesting for courses. So I, it, apparently, I, I thought this year would be a little bit more straightforward as far as actually watching the races that were planned at the beginning of the year when they were planned, but. I guess we're learning in real time. That's not going to be the case. So we'll have to play by uh, play by ear, week by week. It seems. Now, early in the year, that uh, Turkey had to cancel, but they they said they really didn't cancel. They actually postponed it. So they're still yeah. going to have it. Um, I like Turkey's course. But I was just hoping to be uh, in Suzuka. I mean, I love that course. I love how it overlaps the S's and everything. It's just a wonderful, wonderful course. So is. The Australian Grand Prix. I was hoping to see the new redesign on the Australian Grand Prix, but apparently that's not happening as well. But yeah, love the Australian Grand Prix. I, I was disappointed. I mean, that was the first um, that was the first race that we lost, um, you know, because of COVID. So everybody was like disappointed, and um, yeah, too well, bad that, for our man Ricardo. Yeah, that and uh, I also enjoy Singapore. Mm -hmm. That's out of the way and. There's also a rumor that Brazil might be on the chopping block as well. Yeah, so, I've heard that too. But also, I mean, we've been pushing this on Twitter too. I want uh, Malaysia Grand Prix back. I think that's a beautiful course. Even though there's no stands or no fan of the, fans in the stands, <laughs> let's have it there again. I, I just love it. But um, with that news, if COVID's taken away one Grand Prix or actually – a few Grand Prix. Here's another one that are actually adding fans. The Netherlands will allow 67% capacity in the next couple of weeks when they have it over there. So that's also good news too. I mean, flip side of it, flip side of the coin there, Chas. That's interesting. I, I don't know what's going on with, uh, with COVID abroad. Like I don't know what's going on in, in each of the, uh, the countries. Um, I'm assuming that they're having similar dynamics to ours where, 
well, actually, I'm not going to assume that they have similar uh, situation to ours because I don't know if there's anywhere else in the world that had a, a, <laughs> a situation that was exactly like ours because um, the U.S. tends to have a, a unique perspective on um, health in general, um, whether it's uh, it's health care or health and its connection to a politics, apparently. But either way, um, I don't know what exactly what's going on there, but it is interesting to uh, kind of hear stuff like that. So. Um, you know, they're doing 67%. Um, it's, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out in other, um, at other, uh, courses. Yeah. For me, I always love to have fans in the stands. Yeah. The, the situation that's going on. So like with, um, that made, um, Silverstone much better. It's um, weird. It's weird when they don't have, so like, I mean, we, we watched some of the races last year, you know, when they had no fans at all. And it just feels strange watching them even on the podium. I remember, um, man, what what race was it where they um, where they had the the bot um, that was giving was handing everybody their their trophy. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think it might have been Abu Dhabi, <laughs> but um, but they had a robot that was handing out the, the trophies, um, you know, for, for safety reasons. And I was just like, this is just strange. It, uh, it's just not the same without fans. It is. And there was also rumored that Bahrain might do a double header back to back. But I'm kind of glad Turkey came in and there. And I like, I like Bahrain. That's probably the only Middle Eastern course I enjoy, but uh, we'll have to wait and see what Abu Dhabi does with this changes and of course we have Jeddah coming up here too mm -hmm. and but I'm kind of glad Turkey stepped up and did a double header there we'll see how that goes there in fact one part yeah. of the course here in Austin at Coda is modeled after um, some of the corners over there in Turkey hmm. okay I think the last corners I think uh, 16 what when it goes around the um, right before it goes around the tower over at Coda. Okay. Uh -huh. All that from 12 to 19 is modeled after Turkey. I could be wrong, but I think that's what they said. And it looks awfully familiar too. Yeah, no, I, I love, um, I love Coda. I, I love uh, Turkey and I'm also a fan of chicken. So that, uh... well, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> but with that also speaking about Coda, uh, that and the Mexico Grand Prix so far still on, and as well as Brazil, still Brazil still on, but it looks like it's yeah, which is it's kind of I don't know. I, it's frustrating for us us people in the states who like already there's not a ton of fans here, right? And right. so um, you know they don't really prioritize this side of the world when it comes to having races. So when there are races, it, it is that we get to have in a time zone that's reasonable for us to watch in real time, right? Um, which is basically on this side of the world. It's disappointing when they cancel those races. So I'm glad they're, uh, you know, I'm glad some of them are still sticking in. Hopefully they stay. Because, um, you know, the more races we can watch live, the better it is. Because then you can actually watch it with people. I mean, we can't watch it two, three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no. It's not realistic. <laughs> That's one bad thing about both Singapore and uh, the Jap Japanese Grand Prix and Australia, for that matter. That comes on probably the latest of all the uh, races there. Right. Um, next issue here, or the next topic, is a very interesting one. I, I got this off of a couple of YouTube channels as well as off of, like Twitter. Is a, a story about Mitch Schumacher. Um, obviously, he needs to leave Haas in order to survive his F1 career. Uh, but how soon is the question? Because you have basic, you have two rookies there. Who can they learn from who, basically? At least with Ashton Martin, you have uh, Lance Stroll learning somewhat from Vettel. You have at Alpine, you have um, Alonso probably schooling Ocon. We learned that from the last race, too. So he was very happy about that. But who does Mick Schumacher have to look up to? He's been looking up to Vettel, and him and Vettel are really close. So, uh, like Vettel was with his uh, with Mick Schumacher's father, Michael. Uh, uh, Michael was his idol, so Vettel is taking the reins from there and kind of, you know, 
schooling in a sense, uh, Mick Schumacher. So he has a little bit of that um, friendship there and, and someone to look up to, but not necessarily in his own garage. So with that, um, how in the time frame in your in your estimation there, Chaz, when do you think is a good time for Mitt to leave Haas and move on to somewhere else? Maybe he wants to stay with Ferrari, and Ferrari likes him too. We'll go into that story here in a minute, but in your estimation there, Chaz. No, I think he's he's great for uh, for marketing for anyone. Uh, you know what's interesting? Well, maybe not interesting, but what everyone knows about Formula One, in the words of uh, of Mike, it's a, it's a money sport, right? And so it's not just about racing prowess. It's also about uh, how much money you can bring along with you. And so we have, you know, famously, we have uh, Lance Stroll, who's probably been the, the biggest poster boy for that in, in recent years. <laughs> um, and now, uh, you know, Mazepin coming in this year. And, and I, I would put Mike Schumacher, uh, Mick Schumacher in, in that category of people who, um, who are cash cows when it comes to uh, advertising dollars, right? So I don't necessarily know that his career is at stake because if uh, if Lance Stroll can last as long as he has without performing well, um, surely Mitch Schumacher can, you know, will get a few more seasons to kind of get tested out um, just based off his name alone. Um, but I do think that, you know, it's not debatable whether whether Haas is in 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 you know a bad situation. I still need, think that we need to look into Haas's financials because I don't know the rise in Formula One's overall um, popularity may have caused Haas to be successful, even though their team isn't successful because of their their uh, the success of the sport, right? So Haas may still be profitable as a team, even though they're they're not performing well because Formula One's been doing so well. So I don't know if if they're really in dire straits. Um, it's kind of like some of the teams on you, you know in the NFL. I mean, like the Buffalo Bills. I'm from upstate New York, and the Buffalo Bills have been an absolute terrible team for uh, you know at least the last 25 years, and. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, Ralph Wilson, the guy who bought the team, bought the team for something like $200,000 or something crazy um, back 40 years ago. So the team's worth a few billion now. So everything, I mean, the team could do terribly every single year. And he's in the green, 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 right? Like he's he's so far in the green that it doesn't actually matter because of how well the NFL as a whole has done, right? And so I I don't know whether Haas is necessarily in dire straits because I think they may still be doing good on getting their brand name out there much more than they would if they weren't in Formula One. But, um, and I also don't know that Mick is necessarily in dire straits because his you know his his face value from from his name alone. Um, I think it may give him some leverage. Well, but we're going to go back to um, Mick here in a minute. But I want to point out something you just said there about Hoss and mm -hmm. comparison of possibly being making money, but yet not making money with Formula One. Can Gunta be smarter than we think he is <laughs> from what he's doing in? Um, the uh, Netflix series of Drive to Survive, plus with um, you see behind the scenes with his antics and stuff like that, he's creating buzz for Hoss, and we we're, we're talking about it. So because I don't know how terrible he is. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's something. I don't know if he's put on an act or if he's, he's he he really is that way. But um, I mean, some guys do that. Some guy. I mean, I, I feel like. Um, I don't know if you know who like Grant Cardone. He's a he's a real estate guy who's like really bombastic and loud and um, and people say that he's really dumb. I mean, he's also you know worth half a billion dollars. So I mean, who's really dumb? You know. So some some guys I think you know can do that. Um, maybe you're on to something. Who knows? I said before we we're talking about him. So, but back to Mick here. 
Yeah, I agree with you. His name will forever be cemented in not just his father, but him as well as uh, a great race car driver because he's a, at least a Formula 2 tramp champion. And you pointed right. to Lance Stroll. I don't think he has won a Formula 2 championship, if not if I'm not mistaken. So at no, least... Let Lance Stroll did, did very well in Formula 2. Well, he um, didn't, did he win a championship, though? I think he came second, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we can find out in uh, in a little bit here. But um, I, he, he, I know that he did he did very well in, in Formula 2, though. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't a bust. But at least Mick has a championship under the, underneath his name. And yeah. one thing that people are saying about Mick, you give him at least one season and a Formula Series, then the next season he'll perform much, much better. Because he always struggles in the very first season. It was Formula 2, 3, 4, whatever the case may be. His first season in those series, has all, he was always struggled. That the next season he performed much better, if not win the championship itself. So next season, most likely he'll stick with Haas, but the question still remains, how long can he stay with Haas? And when, not just when races, but I mean, just perform better than, he, than he's been doing. He, I mean, he was running in the points in the last race in Hungary, but before everyone else passed him, you know, that shows what kind of car he has. Now, Haas has proven in the past they have, could finish in the points. 2016, 17, 18, they were doing good. Mm -hmm. but slowly they've been slipping and slipping, slipping, diving and diving, diving down. So, I mean, if it, they put all their focus in the 2022 car, but yet here comes 2022 and now they're, they're bust. But what was the effort right. for? You know, uh, you have a potentially great driver, Mick Schumacher, just waiting there for Ferrari seat. He might be waiting for a while. So does he go to something like um, Alfa Romeo to replace Kimi Raikkonen? That could be a possibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, he perform somewhat better. Or would he go to someone like an Ashton Martin or another potential team until Ferrari opens up the seat? But he has to stick with that Ferrari program, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't actually know that he has to, but he he definitely should. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, his his father is an iconic Ferrari driver, mm -hmm. um, and Ferrari is still, even if it's not the prominent team uh, today, it's still one of the most best, uh, the one of the most well funded teams. Um, obviously, the dynamics may shift a little bit with the uh, the salary or the um, the budget cap coming up here but either way there's a lot of history behind ferrari and it's not gonna i mean there aren't too many teams that you can go to where you're gonna get more prominence than that right so mm -hmm. um also just to clear the record up a little bit too uh lance Stroll actually didn't drive formula three i uh, was drive formula two he drove formula three mm. um and he won the championship when he uh his last year in formula three so it's okay. kind of like, uh, I mean, he won the championship, but it was Formula 3, right? So, right. you know, you can kind of look at that whatever way you want to. And he just moved up from there from Formula 3 to Formula 1? Correct. Well, that's almost like a very similar way that Yuki did it because he, he almost skipped almost every <laughs> – skipped like every year. Okay, one year he did Formula 5 or Formula 4, then he moved up to Formula 2. Now he's in Formula 1, so mm -hmm. – um, he skipped some aspects of that. So, but I want to read something that um, Ferrari's boss here, their team principal, says about Schumacher. He says, Mick is in the very first year of Formula One driving for Haas. I think we said at the start of the season that the objective for him was no, was first no pressure, but to make it his learning. So 2021 has been well for him, an important year in terms of learning. And I think we look at that objective. He's doing very well. I think Mick. Since the start of the season is doing well, he is learning, he's progressing, obviously a few mistakes, but that's part of the learning process. Overall, in terms of balance, so far we can be happy. What's important for him is to continue developing and progressing in the second half, but I'm confident that he can do that. So 
very pra very good praise from Ferrari's boss there as far as, you know, Mick Schumacher. And I don't know if that's something that he's actually, you know, really seeing from him or it's just, you know, he's seen his father's legacy possibly returning to Ferrari. Who knows? But I think that's – if what we could see from is actually learning from the, all the former series, and I said this before, that Mick could drive. It's just give him a season – and after that, he can learn the car. Give give him a car period that he can learn for learn learn and uh, be successful with, and he can be up there. Very very yeah. soon. Yeah. No, I think you I think you got to give him you got to give him a chance um, for sure. And I think uh, you know because of his legacy that he'll he'll get the chance that he deserves. Uh, there were some other drivers that you know unfortunately they just weren't in a position to to get a chance to, you know, to really kind of see what they could do or really develop. Um, McLaren in the last few years hasn't really given people much of a chance and they haven't, they haven't really had the bandwidth to because they were performing really poorly. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they needed results right away. Um, so I think, you know, Haas is one of those teams that may be in the situation, the same situation where they need results right away or else, uh, you know, people's jobs are on the line. So they, they don't really have the bandwidth. But there's enough teams on the grid who uh, who could use the promotional dollars um, that would uh, would happily take a, a Mick Schumacher, somebody that they can, you know, put some branding behind. Um, yeah, for sure. Oh, I totally agree with you. I think that's something that uh, you might have. You might follow his, follow his footsteps as far as it being a very successful driver and a famous, fa uh, a very famous driver at that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. On the level, I would say, and I might create some controversy here, but probably on the level of Lewis Hamilton, if he, if well, he car. Well, there aren't a lot of famous race car drivers. I mean, think about think about um, Michael Schumacher. I mean, we're still talking about Michael Schumacher. Uh, you know, what twelve years? I don't, I don't know how many years later. You know, after he's finished his uh, his career, but. Um, but I mean, think about like Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton is extremely famous. Um, he's one of the greatest and, and may go down as the greatest statistically uh, of all time. And yet I can go out, the, I can walk out of my, uh, you know, a condo right now, like this very second and ask someone about Lewis Hamilton. And I will bet nine out of 10 or eight out of 10 will have no idea or will have never heard that name before. So um, you're right. There aren't a lot of famous race car drivers. Everyone has heard the last name Schumacher though. Right. And so, uh, you know, whether you're a race car driver or not, it's just Schumacher is like Jordan. So, yeah. um, you know, so having that last name definitely will carry a lot of uh, advertising weight and, and, you know, it's a it's a money sport, so I think it's it's worth giving him uh, giving him a shot, no matter how he performs. To be honest, I remember it was uh, years ago that um, Mick Schumacher said this. Of course, we're we're in the states right here now, but he said that he loved driving in the United States Grand Prix because after even before after the race, he'd go on the streets and no, this is the only country that nobody knew who he was. <laughs> he can go. He can go have dinner. He can go shopping. He can do all this, and yet, uh, Chaz, you and I might know who he is if he walks down the street. But like you know, as you were pointing out about Lewis Hamilton, the same thing happened with um, Michael Schumacher. So, mm -hmm. yeah, in America, like if you just went to like some random place in in uh, you know Dallas somewhere, you know, because Lewis Hamilton, he's kind of partial to his jewelry and stuff. If he walked in, somebody might just think he was a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> by the way i love um of course i'm not really big mercedes fans but i i do love what when um i did the race lewis had the this hat where's mercedes i don't know it's almost like a plaid red plaid hat i love that it looks fantastic honestly i didn't see it i'm gonna take a look well whenever he does like post race interviews or post qualifying interviews um mm -hmm. I think the last couple of races he didn't work. Oh, I see it. It's it's pretty good looking. Mm -hmm. He always has these uh, 
these kind of like custom hats though because i've seen him wear like the yellow hat um which i mm. haven't seen you know for sale or any uh you know anywhere um he had like a tie-dye one one time it was kind of like a tie-dye like purple and pink um so i mean he just you know he's a he's a he's a fashion guy so he's gonna he's gonna try some stuff so we're moving on to our Twitter question. We can, we're talking about Ferrari here, and I don't know if you saw this new story last week, Chaz. We covered a little bit that um, many of the parts on the current 2021 car for Ferrari were actually from last season's 2020. So it is um, under FIA rule that they could change those parts and still be effective, effectively a still keeping the qualifications of a 2021 car, mm -hmm. 21 power units. So they're still in the legal books, still every, everything's okay. So um, so the Twitter question of the week was, will Ferrari perform better in the second half of the 2021 season because of those changes? 80% of you said yes. And there was a comment on here as well. The engine upgrades will likely be seen for the Italian Grand Prix, should add another 20 BHPs, while still a bit behind Red Bull and Ferrari, I'm mean, sorry, Red Bull and Mercedes Benz in horsepower. Well, when the upgrades are done, are coupled with a well, coupled to the CF21 should be a, more than enough to move them into third in the constructors' championship ahead of McLaren. Do you agree with that, Chaz? Yeah. So from from what everyone's saying, uh, um, it's going to give them a little bit more horsepower. Now, will it be enough to, to for them to catch up with the the top two teams? No, like everyone's saying that it's not going to be enough horsepower to even catch them up, assuming that Mercedes and Red Bull stay where they are and they don't get better over the break, right? right. So, um, you know, c because they absolutely will get better, um, you know, they're not going to, Ferrari is not going to catch Mercedes or Red Bull. However, you know, that, that third place spot McLaren is, um, you know, has pretty firmly been in is in and will be under uh, under some some heavy contention. I think. Well, we figure at least he could they could perform well enough to stay ahead. Or they're tied right now with McLaren, mm -hmm. so they could actually surpass McLaren and safely be in the third spot, right? Behind everybody else. And yeah, we talked about this last week. Can they beat Red Bull? Mercedes Benz this season, this season, most likely not, but at least they could, you know, potentially make that spread wider between them and McLaren. Can that be? A yeah. Possibility? Yeah. And I think having a, a constructors finish where you come in third, um, feels a lot better than coming in fourth because fourth effectively doesn't mean anything. Right. Um, yeah, heck, I don't know if third means anything, but uh, for the constructed, but you know, the the point being, they struggled so much in the last uh, you know couple of years here. At least having some uh, some solace in the fact that the only two teams above them are teams that could legitimately win the world the world championship mm -hmm. versus having another team that has no chance of winning the world championship, which is also ahead of them, and that's a big difference. Well, and I think we just pointed that out too. Is the six finishing six last season coming up to third is a very well improvement for them. So, yeah, and if they finish well above into their place, you know, surpassing McLaren, which they have also deep pocket pocketbooks as well from what they sold from their uh, facility over there in London or outside of London. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a big, big um, boost for them. And I think they could possibly do it with their improvements if they don't screw up. You know, they're famous for doing that as well. So, um, But Fai Alamo, um, here to talk about Miami and the, their Grand Prix actually gets their slot for the 2022 calendar. And it's going to be in early May. So I'm excited to see that. And I know we talked about this extensively in the past, but you know, I'm just real excited to see a second race here in the United States. Uh, I think Miami, it's a perfect spot. I just hope they do it at night, honestly. 
to see it around at the Hard Rock Cafe Stadium in early May. I don't know. I mean, it's it's still a good time of the year, but that's when you know a little bit of the heat and the humidity comes in into the South. But you like that spot for them? I May? mean, so uh, people who are aren't in the states right now may not know exactly what's been happening here um, over the course of the last year, but in the uh, the last eighteen months, uh, there have been there's been a mass uh, transit of people from from big cities into other cities that are basically making new big cities, right? So a lot of people are leaving New York, a lot of people are leaving California, and um, a lot of people are just me leaving the the smaller states and moving to these hot spots. So Austin has grown like crazy. Housing prices are uh, up like triple. <laughs> like it's it's actually insane. Um, people are are offering a hundred thousand dollars over asking, and you know there's if they don't take the offer, there's ninety other people on the list to take that offer. The same thing is happening in in Nashville. Um, it's another hot spot, and uh, and Miami is another one of those places right now that is just exploding. Now Miami's not a, not a small place; and never been a small place. Um, same with Austin and, and, and Nashville. They, you know, they've been major cities, right? Uh, or, or on the larger side, but they've just exploded to another degree. So the fact that, that Miami is now going to be a city that, that hosts, um, F1 races is a really, really big deal. Um, because it's become such a, a popular destination point for, uh, Americans e even more so than it's been in the past. So it's it's super exciting and a, a good location too. Absolutely. And I like the calendar pick, at least, at least for the first part of the season, because one, um, they're racing in a, a parking lot. For those that don't know, of course, probably most of you all do already. They're racing in a parking lot that's um, a part of the Hard Rock Cafe where the Miami Dolphins, the NFL team, plays. So they cannot – the NFL comes around September all the way through, I don't know, January, February, if you're lucky, top of, top of team. Mm -hmm. So doing it in the fall is out of the question. Like pairing it with Coda here in, just in October is out of the question. Right. But if you do it like in – I was hoping to doing like a little earlier in, in April, um, but I could also see it um, being paired with Canada. So the the teams, the drivers, the crew members, they don't have to go far. They just go like from Canada down here to Miami compared to like what the original calendar was. So I think it was supposed to be somewhere like um, Turkey to Canada, back to France, all in like less than a couple weeks period. So. Um, that will have been some major, major travel, at least here now, at least comparing it with Canada, we much, much better. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It, it does make it a little bit tricky because um, they, if Formula One does, it's it's United, or I'll, I'll say it's American run um, during the fall, which is also when we have the, uh, the real football happening, um, the NFL. Oh. Um, so, You're going to uh, in so, so, um, so yeah, it does make it a little bit tricky, but, um, yeah, maybe we can, maybe we can figure it out by lining it up with Canada. It's a interesting suggestion. In fact, the uh, Twitter question of the week, this is going to be a very interesting one. Will is American football, the real football? No, that's not an F1 question. So, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, what? Formula One race will be next on the choppy block. Mm. So we'll have every race in America's on there, including Coda, Mexico, and Brazil. So make sure you get on Twitter at Former Racing and uh, give us your vote and comment, please. We'd love to give you a comment right here on the show too. But um, also like, share, and subscribe. Make sure. Please help us grow the channel so we can give you more and more content. We'd love to give you that. And if you have any topic for us to cover on this show or any show whatsoever, theformofracing at gmail.com. And luckily, we are not suspended or anything like that due to Mike taking a shirt off last week. So I guess we'll see you <laughs> next week. <laughs> so, yeah, yes. Bye, guys.
All right, see you.